Hi guys, Johnny Good here for realhomestudio.com. Today, taking a look at three different ways that you can approach compression like a pro. And just before we dive straight in, I want to remind you guys to please like and subscribe. And if you've got something to say, please do drop it in the comments box below. So yeah, today looking at three different ways you can approach your mix before you directly start dropping a compression plugin onto the individual tracks. Now this year is the 10 year anniversary of my first solo album, This Is England. And I was thinking about it the other day and um, very clearly remember it exposing a lot of grey areas in my knowledge base. Before then I'd, I'd worked in and out of studios and I'd worked um, with bands and groups. I'd always worked with other people. This was very much the first completely solo project. And as I say, it really threw up some grey areas. And one of those was compression because I still really remember at the time not completely grasping it 100%. Uh, and in some ways it wasn't such a bad thing. I mean, it made uh, the whole project a lot longer because I was using my ear a lot more than really understanding some of the processes which I was going through when mixing. Uh, and it came out sounding really good. But um, that lack of, uh, lack of understanding certainly cost me dear in time. And it was a long project, a bit of a labor of love. These days when I'm working, I can't afford that time. So fortunately these days, I have a much better understanding of the processes uh, of, of mixing. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. Uh, three different uh, processes you can go through um, before actually thinking about dropping uh, your compression plug-in straight on your track. So let's move on first off and take a look at process one, which is automation. Now automation is great because uh, it leaves no artifacts on your track. It literally is that um, automated volume knob. So you're just going to be turning down the track when it gets a bit too loud, smoothing out the peaks or boosting up the troughs. If you check out uh, the Pro Mix Andy Wallace, you'll see he's a total master of this. Uh, you can check out a whole bunch of his stuff uh, online about his automation techniques. But uh, really, if you're a super master at automation, you can really get so much of the work done on the mix. Particularly, you know, we're talking about dynamic instruments like uh, the voice and like bass as well, which can really, you know, jump out and cause a lot of problems if you haven't smoothed out those uh, peaks already. So let's just jump into Studio One and take a look at automation. I'm using Presonus Fader Port to do these adjustments. Uh, you can use it on a mouse. It's just a little bit more fiddly. Um, and I really like using the fader on fader port. Okay, so let's just check out this vocal. A couple of lines which we're going to apply some automation to. Let's take a listen. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. So you can hear on the light and the bright, it's just jumping out a little bit more. You can see that too on the screen from the waveform. Um, so what we're going to do is just take down the light and the bright just down by a couple of dB. Uh, so what we're going to do on Studio One is you can right click, uh, activate show or hide automation. And then on this automation here, you can either set it to right. And um, what I'm going to do is set it to touch. Uh, and what touch does is bounce back to the original volume. So I can just um, just notch down those areas. And then when I release the fader, it's just going to jump straight back up again. It makes uh, automation if you duck in a lot easier. So um, let's just give that a go. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. Now we can just set this to read. And take a listen. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. Now, of course, you can play around with that. You can play around with these little nodes and fine tune what you've done. Um, let's just take a listen to that in the mix. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. Great stuff. Now, there's another way, uh, an easier way, if I just turn the automation off. Uh, and I've got to confess, I use this plugin all the time. I really like this plugin, which is Vocal Ride from Waves. It's not an expensive plugin at all. If you pick it up in one of the plethora of many of Waves' special offers, you can get it uh, cheap as chips. And it is a real good uh, time saver. You can just kind of dial it in, and it's going to do that job for you. And once you get used to the plugin, it's really, um, as I say, a big uh, time saver to your workflow. Let's just take a listen to that vocal now uh, with Vocal Rider. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. So you can see it's making those adjustments already. It's also bringing the level up a little bit more here. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. 
smoothing out that vocal. Now we've got the automation bypass. I'm not using, we've got, see, I've got automation off here, but it's actually um, using Vocal Rider instead. Let's take a listen. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. And there's your vocal sound and really smoothed out and right up front in the mix, just where you want them to be. Moving on, the second great way you can approach compression in your mix is to make the most out of channel strips. Uh, now, channel strips fundamentally do two things. They're going to apply harmonic distortion to your tracks and they're going to apply some compression. So use subtly, they can be really potent uh, when the whole track builds up. Um, to making your mix sound, for want of a better word, just simply better. This is why when people run through analog desks, you know, stuff just sounds good before you even get started. And the bonus of using channel strips is that they're going to be using doing some of the do donkey work for you before the, you then go on and move on uh, to using uh, compression in your track. Now, one of my favorite channel strips is from Kit Plugins. That's um, one which I pretty much use all the time. I recommended and reviewed that plugin uh, a few months back. But today, I'm actually using a free plugin from Analog Obsession called Tuba. And you'll see there's no compression control uh, per se. Just by going through and driving through uh, this um, channel strip, we're going to be getting some harmonic distortion. We're going to be uh, getting a little bit of compression. And you can just do a very little bit of subtle EQing with... Um, this particular plugin, you've got a little um, high frequency or low frequency uh, boost or attenuation. You can flick the gain between low and high, um, and it's a very nice, simple uh, channel strip. Let's take a listen in the mix with Tuba off. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. And with Tuba on. I saw the light, corrupt and bright. So utilizing channel strips can really build up throughout your track uh, to help with compression before you actually even get started using individual track compression. And finally, well, a little bit of a cheat this one because it is actually using a compressor, uh, but using a compressor on the mix bus, which I've done a couple of videos of in the past. I'm a big fan of using the uh, compression on the mix bus. Again, it's just taking some of that donkey work out of the compressors, which you're going to have later down in the chain. It's being subtle and gently building up uh, your mix. Um, the things to note with using uh, a mix bus compressor is just not to hit it too hard because you're going to just squash uh, the life out of your mix before you even start. And make sure you do this at the start of your mix, not later on uh, when you've already made some compression choices in your mix. So make sure you get this on first before you start making any individual track choices. Really looking for about one to no more than four dB of gain reduction from your mix. Uh, slower attack speeds, faster release speeds, so you keep things natural, keep your ratios nice and low, and just play around with it from there. Just start with uh, subtle settings. So let's just take a listen to the difference. Um, I'm using Bust SE, an awesome free uh, plugin from Analog Obsession. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can grab that for yourself. Uh, I've also done a full review of this plugin as well, and it is sweet. So let's just take a listen to this mix, um, and then we'll bring in Buster SE. I saw the light, corrupt and bright, in your eyes, I saw the light. And let's bring in Buster SE. I saw the light, corrupt and bright, in your eyes, I saw the light. Drop it out. Though it may change, I stay the same, so book them in, Back and in. spit them out. Above the crowd. And you can hear Buster SE just helping to glue everything together. Now I've already mixed this track and it's had Buster SE on it from the start, so it's no surprise that it falls apart a little bit when I take it out. But I'm a big fan of mixed bus compression, as I say, it takes out some of that donkey work which I've got to do later on with individual track compression. So there you go, three different ways that you can approach compression like a pro from your home studio. If you want to get more from your home studio and start getting awesome results from your mixes, then do go and check out my absolutely free course, The Virtual Console. Almost an hour's worth of content in that course. I take you through the fundamentals of how you can really get your track together from the ground up, utilizing analog styled plugins to get a simple and musical approach to your mixes. My name's Johnny Good for realhomestudio.com. Hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please remember to like, subscribe. Most importantly, guys, go and have yourselves an absolutely great day.